side conversations. <laughs> okay, it's 6.30 somewhere, so we're going to go ahead and start the meeting. Would you please take roll? Ms. Adkins? Here. Mr. Houston? Here. Mrs. McDaniel? <clears throat> Mrs. Peterson? Here. Mr. Stoffer? Here. Mr. Wylidge? Here. Mrs. Sheffel? Here. Can I get a motion to approve the May 15th, 2023 agenda? So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? We do have 7.04 that will be pulled tonight. The, we will not be um, <coughs> going into closed session for that. They're not able to be here. Anything else? Vote, please. Ms. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Houston? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Wylidge? Yes. Mrs. Sheffel? Yes. Accommodation and good news. So we have Ms. Deb Wylidge <coughs> is here tonight and she is going to talk to us a little bit about some of the history of Lewis Central. So, yep, you'll need to sit up here. <laughs> <laughs> be very short um, well what got me started on this was um, oh, actually Daryl came home one night and said you know people don't know why Lewis Central is called Lewis Central and I'm like oh my goodness I think we need to I need to do some history um, digging and so my first thought about starting the digging was one room schools I knew there were one room schools and I thought but where am I gonna find that so I went to the Council Bluffs library and as I was searching, I thought, well, I think I'll just go up to the desk and ask if they know. And so I went up to the desk and he said, we have a paper that's called, I Remember One Room Schools in Lewis Township, Rural Council of Siobhan by Wendell Hack. And when I got this, <laughs> it was in the special collections part of the library and I was fascinated because it was exactly what we needed for information about our one-room schools and where we've come from and what he what he did as he was writing this um, he went and interviewed the people that had gone to the one-room schools and you'll find a lot of them have a lot of the same recollections but a lot of them um, even share what their teachers were like they share what their schools were like and um, I think the one thing that touched me a lot was they had talked about Miss Helen as being um, their teacher in their one room school. And I had Miss Helen for math when I was in seventh grade. And it was like bringing back so many memories of people and places and things. Um, it was really great. So I, um, after I had read through it in the library, I just thought, oh my gosh, I gotta see if I can find window. So I got on my phone and I found out that Wendell had had a business, but that he had passed six months before I had started looking or before I started looking. And so I um, was disappointed, but I, I knew because it was in special collections, I could go ahead and make a copy of it. And then I, um, I think, did I contact you then, Chris? Text, yes. I texted him from the library and I said, would, you know, would it be okay if I, um, if I make a copy of this? And I did. And it was just kind of my beginning to put that piece together without really having to dig because it was already put together for me. Um, he was unable to graduate from Lewis Central because when he attended his one room school, he graduated in 1959 and that was before we had our high school. So he had gone through the elementaries and then had to go to Council Bluffs to the Council Bluffs school system to finish. The other thing that I was, that I really think makes Lewis Central Community Schools so unique is that we are a township. We're not built around a city. We're not built around a town. We're built around a township. And that is another area that fascinates me is how we have been so successful in keeping families and in coming into the district. And so um, I, as I was learning more about Wendell, I found out that he raised his children in the district and he enjoyed watching them graduate from Lewis Central um, in spite of him not being able to. And how I learned that was when I came in to ask Anna if I could do this presentation, she said, well, I went to school with one of his sons, Chris. <laughs> it was one of Chris's sons, right? Yeah. Anna went to school with Eric. With Eric. And he's 
Oh, older brother. Okay. So anyway, there's so many connections that it make it it makes it really fun to to make those connections with everyone that has gone here. Um, the other thing that I thought was um, when he left such a good historical paper that I wanted to make it co make a copy for each of you so that you could have it and um, that the administration could have it. And I'm hoping that if you get done with it and you decide that you don't want to have it in your collection, maybe donate it to the school libraries because I think it would be something really nice for the students to be able to read to know where we came from because I went here all my life and our kids went here and I didn't know about all the one room schools. So it was, it was very interesting to me. Um, when I when I, I have a neighbor Mick Mick Brown and, and Elaine Brant Brown are our neighbors and when she was kind of helping me because she's older than I am and helping me with some of the history of Lewis Central Lewis Central and I decided to make a copy of this and when I gave it to her I was on my way to the thrift store to do my volunteering <laughs> and the phone rang when I got there and she goes Deb I know Wendell Heck. He used to come and babysit us, and he'd bring all of his siblings. <laughs> and then she said, not only that, I'm on page nine. She was four years old in the picture. She had started kindergarten at four, and she was in the picture on page nine. She was, yes. I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh-huh. Being in the picture, uh -huh. this little boy right here uh -huh. is my dad. <laughs> That's my dad. Yes. So he was in the first kindergarten mm -hmm. class. Was. Fantastic. Yep. And that's what makes it so fun. There's so many connections. So after Elaine told me that, um, we had that connection too. Um, and, she, and so anyway, I just feel like there's so many people that live here in our community that have stayed here um, because they grew up here um, or they've come back to Lewis Central because they felt like they were given an excellent education here while they attended. Um, many wanted their children to have ed educational opportunities that they were given here. And um, I think the educational opportunities and the extracurriculars that are offered at Lewis Central are amazing. And just looking at where we started and the responses of the people here talking about their how the teachers worked so hard and what they did and how much they appreciated what they did for them and I just think Lewis Central is an outstanding school and Amy I don't know if you know this that's what I was just going to say she also has an article that her dad has um, Wendell had gone and interviewed this is with my him grandpa. it's your grandpa mm -hmm. okay sorry okay. no that's okay I'm sorry I, I didn't mean to upset you <laughs> These are things that I don't even know. I know, and that's why I just think it's so valuable because there's so many things that we have in our history that just keep this school vibrant in everything that's there. Um, anyway, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be able to come here and share this. And like I said, I think it's a great publication and it shouldn't be locked away in the library in Council Bluffs, but it should be here um, in our district and in, in our library. Um, I also want to thank Wendell's family. This is his wife, Julie. She's come tonight to just share in this moment of being able to share this wonderful piece of literature and his son, Chris. This is so cool. I love that you did this. Well, I, I can't let history just yeah. not be there. <laughs> yeah, my kids and, love to read it. and then before I came, I forgot I had this little article, and I'm not sure if it came from Daryl's mom or if it came from my mom. But um, since we were talking about um, the bond issue and, and how far we've come and how many years ago it was and how much the school cost when we first started, I thought this is an ideal page to be able to be looking at from where that started. And the man on the second page was actually my principal when I was in kindergarten here. <laughs> So thank you. You're welcome. So you're welcome. I'm sorry, Amy, I made you cry, but no, I think it's something you're gonna just, cherish. Yeah. This is these are some stories that I'm I mean I knew where the schoolhouse was. Uh -huh. I the road technically still exists. If you go down, um, I'm so sorry, I feel like I'm this is so it's just <laughs> caught me completely off guard. Um, but if you go down on the west side of Gifford Road. Mm -hmm. on the south side of Fox Run Golf Course, you run into 55th Avenue. Uh -huh. And Gifford Forest is on the west side. From the other side of Gifford Forest, from like where the levee is, mm -hmm. you can see where my grandparents lived and the road 
the trees actually have lined the road through that timber. There is now some foliage and things that has grown and you can't drive on it, but you can see where the tree lined road was that my grandpa used to walk to school. And so, yeah. Yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me do this. <laughs> well, thanks for bringing this. I know I did, um, it was 25 years ago, 26 years ago, when we were doing the bond issue, I had gone into the um, library and was just trying to find some information about Lewis Central. Mm -hmm. And um, I ran across an article that um, it was before the state said you had to have your own high school. Mm -hmm. And in the plans that Council Bluffs had, was very interesting. It was in the non where they said they talked about tearing down AL and building a high school in the Twin City area. Mm. I mean, it was just, you yeah. know, and then Lewis Central, you know, Lewis, Lewis Township mm -hmm. decided that they wanted to um, per, or create Lewis Central mm -hmm. and build their own high school. And so those plans went out and and trying to you know just find out exactly who what board members you know voted on it and and things yeah. like that and i think that'd be something that i think we could you know when you look at our website we don't have anything about history and so that i think yeah. that that could be something that we could get together oh, and, and have the history of of lewis central yeah that's i have i have really started that process mm -hmm. and I thought well I'll get it started and yeah I actually want to go before that too because um, I have my mom was a Lewis and because of the Lewis brothers that were here which were my great-grandparents um, okay. that's how the district or the township got its name and I don't know that history right so that's why as I was getting started I thought okay I'm gonna get this his get this history yes. go back as far as I can go and then once I had this now I'm gonna go forward so anything that I get I'll pass on okay. um, over time with you guys just yeah. because I think it's it's so important and there's been so many so many kids that have gone through here that just you know have excelled tremendously in what they've done Absolutely. So life dreams are being fulfilled here. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the ben. work you put in. Yes. And thank well, you I for the top did all this. <laughs> That's okay. But I'm just saying for, I mean, I know he did, but you know, for going in and finding it and bringing it out for people to share and to see. That's so. So can we ask, like, how, what, what, what gave Wendell the the, the urge to do this? I would say that he, uh, he he loved to to document history. We, we laugh on the way over here. We we go through photo albums and everything's documented. And, um, so he was always really good at keeping track of things. And and ultimately, I think he was just super proud of the, the area and, and the you know the history and and he had a way with people. So like that said, to to gather this information, he had to go through and. You know, remember people and go talk to them and 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 he enjoyed that so to to keep track of all these things mm -hmm. these are things that he gave us as gifts yeah for christmas we would get in these, these books and, and yeah. we probably got three or four different iterations of it's not a school thing it's a family history thing and mm -hmm. and um as kids we laughed about it or we laughed about it you know and, and, and we appreciated it but not as much as we do now but it's not yeah, the, when Dad called and said that this is what she wanted to do, he would have loved this. This yeah. would have been a big deal for him. So. I wish she could have been here to talk about it. So. Appreciate it. It's awesome. Thanks for your work. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Yes. Guys. Okay, do we have more accommodation and good news? I do. I have a presentation. Okay, so the first thing we have is these are middle school students who are recognized in the Right Touch magazine. So the Right Touch is, in, is, a, is published annually by the Council Bluffs Community School District in cooperation with the Council Bluffs Optimist Club. Students from the, in the Council Bluffs Community Schools in Lewis Central and St. Albert and Heartland Christian and Children's Square and Iowa School for the Deaf are invited to submit entries. Um, these, the, the 
Council Bluffs Community School dis District, Lewis Central, St. Albert, Heartland Christian, Children's Square, and Iowa School for the Deaf are um, provide instruction and encouragement to young writers and artists. And the whole purpose of this is to, sh is to share their original work with editor rights and original artwork um, with our school, with areas of Council Bluffs. Um, so we had uh, quite the list of middle school students that were that were selected for this, and they're selected each year by a panel of judges from the Council Bluffs Optimist Club. Um, so we have Riley Campbell, um, Leah Carr, John, um, is it Frank, uh, Frankie, uh, Alex Gravy, Evie Hightrack, Kenzie Jones, Isabella Martin or Martinez Hansen, um, Macy, is it Meek? I think so. Uh, Brooke Nelson, April uh, Pio, uh, Madison uh, Rethmeyer, and if I'm butchering these names online, I apologize. <laughs> so, uh, Oakley Rogers, uh, Piper Trescott, Madison Wright, um, and then not pictured from um, Lewis Central High School were um, Kristen Alter, Olga Membrano, uh, Kylie Moore, Jenna Rice, and then Lainey um, Schweisberger. So, quite the quite the list of Lewis Central. Um, writers and artists so go to the next one our we had district track um, and for the first time in history our boys won the district track meet um, they will head to state on may 18th through 20th overall a total we have uh, nine events qualified for the boys and then five events qualified for the girls and that's the list of uh, boy and girl qualifiers um, up there so and so that's at the end of this week. So we wish them well as they hopefully bring back some hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the KMA Athlete of the Week. So Miss Elise Thramer was the KMA Athlete of the Week this week. Um, so it seems like we have one just about our last week. So it seems like every week we got somebody up there. So it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Homecoming has been set. So that is October 2nd. Mark your calendars. Uh, 2023. Uh, we had two state tennis qualifiers. We have uh, Lainey Olson for the girls. She uh, qualified in third place. And then we have uh, Christian Jensen. He won districts to go there. Um, and then, so then we have their state is May 23rd and 24th. So we had two teachers recognized for the Nelson's Excellent in Teach Excellence in Teaching Award. Uh, from a high school, our choir teacher, Kevin Palou, and then our kindergarten teacher at Kraft, for one of them, uh, uh, Julie Rizika. Riz Rizika. So, apologize, Julie, if you're watching. <laughs> uh, so, we, Lewis Central has been recognized by Project Lead Away um, as a 2022-23 distinguished school. This recognition, this recognition celebrates our commitment to help to help students own their education by increasing student ac access, engagement, and achievement in our Project Lead the Way programs. Our high school program has been recognized. Every year, awards have been handed out since 2017. And we've also, the high school has also been recognized as a model school as far back as 2011. Lewis Central is the only district from the Omaha Council Bluffs metro area to have a school recognized by Project Lead Away this year. Uh, Lewis Central High School is the only high school from the state of Iowa to, from the state of Iowa to be recognized as well. So that's pretty awesome. And then we have a short video here. This is uh, Decision Day 2023. Um, so these were, we had 90 of our high school seniors shared their commitment to 27 different post-secondary institutions spread out across, across the country. And there's music that plays to it, but you don't need the music. Oh, there we go. Oh, did it restart? This is a fun video. Josh put this together. The so. music helps. Yes, it does. It yeah. really gets it exciting. Yeah. Let's see, for some reason, we had a large contingency of students go to Iowa State. 
I'm not quite sure why, but. Absolutely. <laughs> Go stay. It's better than okay. It's quite the string here of Iowa State. Wasn't there like 11 of them? Uh, there's it quite a few. A group. Thursday, UNK. It's my parents' alma mater. IT Fry, what too? Yeah. So, yeah, so thanks, Josh, for putting that video together. Yes. All right. Uh, this week, last week was Teacher Appreciation Week, and so they were showered with um, thanks and appreciation. So um, we have absolutely some of the best around, and so it's nice to uh, be able to recognize them. And then this month is School Board Recognition Month. So you guys do have a certificate um, at your place to recognize you guys for um, what you have done. I brought cookies last time. Um, and so, but nobody took cookies. So I should have brought cookies again. So anytime. Yeah. So just uh, thank you guys for um, everything you guys do. I know it's it's a uh, you guys get paid so well to do this. Absolutely. So <laughs> that's what people think. It is appreciated. My paycheck so. doubles every year. That's a double every year. Yeah. 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 Okay, and I think that's it. Anyone else? Combination and good news. We had a school record broken this week by Gracie Hayes. Most we did. assists. Just 42 and counting. Yep. Yep. Uh, tonight is the last music concert we have. Yep, tonight is. Yep. Choir concert tonight. What's that? First, first baseball game tonight. First baseball game tonight, too, yeah. Yep. Taking away my thunder for my superintendent report. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can elaborate on it. Is it right. a home game? Uh, yeah. Iowa, 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 Iowa Western. Yeah, Iowa, Iowa Western. Western. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll go on to comments and suggestions. This is the first time during our agenda that anyone in the audience or anyone online can type something to address the board. And hearing none, we'll go on to consent agenda. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Do we have an updated personnel sheet? We do. There's one addition in section I. Any discussion? Oh, please. Mr. Houston? Yes. Mrs. McDaniel? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Weilich? <clears throat> yes. Ms. Atkins? Yes. Mrs. Shepard? Yes. Report 6.01, Superintendent Report. So uh, tonight is opening night for baseball. Softball is opening night is on the 22nd. Um, I just got off the phone today. We're going to plan to do the turf installation on the Tuesday after Memorial Day, so that'll kick off then. So. Basically, from that time until August, there's not going to be any any field out there. Um, scoreboard tentative ticket kickoff date is June 1st right now. Um, on June 5th, I'm going to invite you guys. We're going to have, I like to start every year and end every year together as a big staff. And so uh, the first day of school or the first day that staff's back, we do a big kickoff. Um, where we have breakfast and we pull all the staff together um, from all of our buildings and um, uh, regardless, classified, uh, certified, bring everybody together and we just basically, you know, kick off the year and then we close the year. It's just a lot about celebration and it's a lot about, you know, look at all the great things we've done throughout the year to help students and to, you know, that fit our mission. Um, we'll recognize the years of service, recognize retirements and 
Um, so we'll have breakfast before, beforehand and then a short hour long presentation and then um, with a variety of people and then we'll do a cake at the end. So i um, like to invite you guys for that. If you're not busy, that's June 5th, it's Monday morning. And then um, we have kindergarten roundup. Our numbers are pretty big. And so we are now having conversation about potentially adding um, a, a, ki a kindergarten teacher back. We'd originally, there was an ESSER position that fell off and we just kind of let it, let it be. And now we've gotten, I mean, class sizes are to the point where we're gonna start probably advertising this week for another kindergarten teacher. So, which is a good thing. So, um, and then um, graduation, Corey Blair's just been um, emailing you guys some stuff about graduation. It's gonna be 1.30 at the Mac Center. Uh, and I think it's the 30th, isn't it? No, the 28th, I think. So, um, so please, yep, on the 28th. So if you guys check your email and just respond to him, if you can make it, that'd be wonderful. Um, other than that, that's about it. Okay. Discussion item 7.01, Professional Development Purchase Agreement for Solution Tree. Yep, so I do have Dr. Hartman. We're going to have her pop up here and give a quick rundown on what this is. I don't think my presentation will evoke the same kind of emotions. <laughs> yes, I, hope. I mean, I can if you, if you like, force it. Just turn it on. Uh, okay, so this uh, proposal is for um, Solution Tree to come in and work with the district next year. Uh, what they provide is basically some targeted professional learning around MTSS, which is multi tiered systems of support. And so, how this came to be was really working through those goals that came up through SIAC. Then, our district leadership team has been tackling those goals and turning them into action. And so, specifically, like goals one through four really look at like intervening with kids and closing the gap with kids. And so, really looking at like on this page, like what are we, how are we providing tier one, tier two, tier three supports? And so one of the main things this learning will do will provide us with common language, common understanding of support system of MTSS. We already do a lot um, with MTSS. Um, this would just help us really get on the same page and then move the work even further. So what the um, contract that potentially we would be signing for this proposal gets us is this right here where we have stopped. It would get us um, this June, we would have our administrative team and then our teacher leaders who work uh, within MTSS would get together with the um, professional learning expert they're sending to us and we're going to do like a one day kind of learning, planning. They're really going to take the time to get to know our needs in the district um, and work with us as a leadership team. Then there will be an August uh, day for all staff. Um, that would be an overview. And then we will have, um, I believe it's three or four sessions throughout the year where they're gonna customize that professional development support, again, for that leadership group. Um, there's several books that the leadership group is gonna get. Um, and so the intention is that we're gonna be building our internal capacity to then go and support what that looks like in each of our buildings and have some consistency across the district. And then if you scroll down, you can see how they break down the price a little bit further. There we go. So there's the price breakdown, um, which it's, it's in line with what a lot of other professional learning would look like to bring somebody in for different days. Um, that would be the whole package of what we're getting. So previously we had taken this to our TQ committee um, so we could pay for this potentially through our um, TQ funds and it was approved through our TQ committee. So then now it comes to uh, the board to uh, potentially be able to move officially forward. So any questions with the, this proposal? Everyone good? Any questions? Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. 7.02 Nutrition Service Bids. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to Andrea to talk about the bids. 
So a uh, majority of our bids are on a renewal cycle. So our prime vendor, our pizza vendor, chemical vendor are all um, renewals this year. The milk ben vendor, uh, we did put that out for bid. We had uh, three bidders, Kemp's, A&E, and Highland. Uh, Kemp's, who we are currently using, did come in with the low bid uh, based on our usage. Uh, the bids were very tight on that one and we really had to get down and look at what our actual usage has been um, this past year to determine who the low bidder um, was. So they were very competitive bids. Um, so we would like to go with Kemp's on that one. And then the bread vendor, ben, vendor for this year, The um, we sent out bids to multiple vendors and we only received a bid back um, from Rotella's and that is who we are currently using so um, we would request that we approve um, the bid from Rotella's so what the action would be um, would to um, approve the prime vendor performance food groups the milk vendor for Kemp's Pizza Hut vendor for or Pizza Hut for our pizza vendor the bread vendor at Rotella's chemical vendor would be Capital Sanitary Supply. Does anybody have any questions? And this goes out every three years? Uh, so three we years? do three on everything except for the prime vendor and the prime vendor is every four. Okay. Uh, we did look at renewing the prime <laughs> vendor early, uh, but uh, we put it out and no one uh, wanted to bid on it. So we went ahead and asked uh, performance for their renewal numbers and they were uh, very much in line with what they are currently pricing at. <coughs> Any other questions? <coughs> okay. 7.03 policy review, 802.2 request for improvements on the first reading. Yep, so if you can go to the, David, you go to the policy, please. So the policy here, so essentially in the other, like in our purchasing policy, um, you give me the authority to, to approve purchases of items up to $20,000. And then items <laughs> over $20,000 go before the board as a separate agenda item. This was a policy that I don't know if it was overlooked or what the what the thought process was behind it, but this is for specifically improvements that would just require you guys to approve approve improvements that are in excess of ten thousand dollars. I would just like to make everything twenty just for for just for ease, because sometimes things get kind of iffy. Like for instance, when we're talking camera installs and those types of things, like we're approving the purchase of cameras, but it also comes with an installation cost. So it just gets kind of dicey, at least if I know like, listen, 20,000 and over, it's an easy go to the board. You know, I don't have to try to figure out, is this an improvement or is this a purchase? You know, so. So when we had this audited, did they miss it? You know, cause we went through and looked at all of our policies. We had, you know, the, whatever the, drawing a blank now. ISB. Thank you. <laughs> they didn't th this was like an exception to the uh, i have i have well, no we idea reviewed it in 21 2021 so i think this is probably the first well i mean I eric came in 2019 we had that outside party look at all of our policies so was this one that we yeah made an exception to what they found as they updated yeah or is this the normal the legislation? state i think it was flipped around if I recall, the board chose to up the number on the regular purchasing side and didn't Neglected realize to do the other one. Didn't I, realize I could, that, that could make sense. Also similar. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. That's what when I asked Andrea about it, Andrea thought maybe it was just an oversight. So, okay. but that would be just be my request. I mean, you guys can do what yeah. you want. It just makes it simpler. So. Well, nobody had ever <clears throat> asked it to be changed. No. Until now. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. So that's the history of it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Any other questions? <coughs> All right. Um, 7.04. We will table to another time they can be here. So then we'll go to comments and suggestions. This is the second time during our 
agenda that anyone in the audience or anyone online could type something in and um, address the board. And hearing none, we'll go to action items. 9.01, professional development purchase agreement with Solution Tree. Madam President. Mr. Stauffer. Uh, I'd like to make a recommendation to approve the professional development purchasing agreement with Solutions Tree for $34,911. Second. Any discussion? Vote, please. Mrs. McDaniel? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Stauffer? Yes. Mr. Rylage? Yes. Ms. Adkins? Yes. Mr. Houston? Yes. Mrs. McDaniel? Or Mrs. Shuffle, sorry. Yes. 9.02 nutrition service bids. Madam Chair. Ms. Adkins. I'd like to make a motion to approve the bid contracts with the vendors as follows. Prime vendor, performance food group, milk vendor, Kemp's, pizza vendor, Pizza Hut, <laughs> bread vendor, Rotella's, chemical vendor, capital, uh, capital sanitary supply. Second. Any discussion? Vote, please. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Stalker? Yes. Mr. Wiley? Yes. Ms. Adkins? Yes. Mr. Houston? Yes. Mrs. McDaniel? Yes. Mrs. Shuck? Yes. Discussion items 10.01, superintendent evaluation review. And I will ask you, Dr. Hazing, do you want this in closed session as yes. we go through your evaluation? Sure. All right. <laughs> And with that, I need a motion to go into closed session. So, so moved. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Vote, please. Mr. Stauffer? Yes. Mr. Rylage? Yes. Ms. Adkins? Yes. Mr. Houston? Yes. Mr. McDaniel? Yes. Mrs. Peterson? Yes. Mrs. Shuffle? Yes. And with that, we, are, <coughs> we won't adjourn yet, but our next board meeting will be June 5th at 6.30. And so we'll have our closed session discussion and we'll come out and there'll be no more business to take care of. Wonderful.